Thank you very, very much for making the effort to come out and be here tonight. You will be very uh, well fed tonight, and you'll be very glad that you came. For that, we appreciate that. Uh, we'd like to open tonight with a word of prayer. And I'd ask uh, Jason Morgan if he would give us an opening prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are met here because of our love for Thee and for the great blessings Thou hast provided in creating and blessing this land in which we live. <clears throat> we feel to love Thee and serve Thee. We feel to arm ourselves with information and opportunities to do our part in this day to give our lives to a good cause to save this land from the attacks that surely are based in the adversary <clears throat> who is attacking thy good works. May we show ourselves worthy of thy approval and blessing by being willing to do our part to combat evil and to restore peace and righteousness to this land. We thank thee for thy blessings. We thank thee that we live in this great land. We know that it is by thy hand and, and blessing that we have this great land. We praise thy name. Please be with us and help our hearts to be moved where they need. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Um, Folks, we are really, really going to be blessed with a great speaker this evening. And um, I don't want to embarrass him too much because we've known him for a long time, but he's one of our very favorite people in the whole world because he understands the principles of freedom and liberty. And um, if, if I can beg some of Rick's um, approbation here, I guess, I'm going to just tell you something really quick. Uh, this is kind of about myself. And I felt like maybe I'd like to share this with you. Uh, I'm a convert to the church, as most of you probably know. I joined the church, I think, when I was about 20 or 21, something like that. I can't remember, 61, some long time ago. Anyway, uh, the reason that the gospel found me, or I found the gospel, has to do with the fact that as a young girl, when I was being raised back in Illinois, Champaign, Illinois, um, my parents were very patriotic people. Uh, they were what we used to call red-hot Robert Taft Republicans. Now, some of you will know that, and some of you won't. But anyway, um, they weren't precinct committeemen, they weren't involved in any party politics, but they always voted, and they always knew what was going on. Back in those days, families really did. And so I heard a lot of talk around the table, and Every year, whenever they had parades back in our town, which was often, we had parades the 4th of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, <coughs> we would always go to these parades. And as I would stand there on that curbing, as a young girl, I can remember back being seven, eight years old, when the flag went by with the marching band, something inside here really, really touched me, and it was very difficult to hold back the tears. I didn't understand that at all back then, but I knew it was an emotion that had a meaning. Well, later on as I grew up and when I got into high school, sometimes we'd have assemblies that were patriotic assemblies, or sometimes we'd just have an assembly where we'd sing the Star Spangled Banner or America the Beautiful. And again, here's that feeling that was so strong, and I'd have to fight to not tear up because I didn't want to be embarrassed in front of my friends, but that was there. Well, a few years later, when I lived in Tucson, I went to hear a man and his son speak. They were speaking about the principles of freedom and liberty, and that was Ezra Tapp Benson and his son Reed Benson. And as I sat there in that audience and I heard that man speak, 
my heart, my bosom burned so much with inside of me, I could hardly control myself. And just a little bit later, a few months later, when the LDS missionaries came to teach me about the gospel of Jesus Christ, I immediately had the same feeling. And so for me, here in Johnson, the principles of freedom and liberty and the Constitution are like this. There's no <coughs> separation in my mind. And that is one of the reasons why my life has been, I guess, the way it has been, because I love the gospel with all my heart, and I love this country with all my heart, and I will do anything that it takes to preserve and protect this land and to help the leaders, our legislators, the people that serve to understand what the proper role of government is and what the rule of law is. And that is sadly lacking today in our elected officials. At any rate, Rick is going to pick up from here and he is going to run you a race here tonight with the information that he has. And we will be well fed. Thank you again for being here. The title of this presentation is The Book of Mormon, The Constitution, and You. And uh, there really is a relationship between all three. I certainly hope you realize it as I do. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, important principles. We're going to talk about duties of a citizen. Uh, let me first tell you a little bit about myself. I am not a spokesman for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, I am not a spokesman for Heritage Academy, which is the school where I teach. I'm not a spokesman for anybody else but myself. However, for the next 35 minutes, virtually every word I speak will be the words of the scriptures and the prophets, verbatim. I'm not a spokesman for them, but they certainly are a spokesman for themselves. Um, if I happen to interpret a thing or two, uh, then that's my own interpretation. But I, much of the, of the, of the promptings and the, and the commandments and the warnings of the prophets is very clear and uh, not really ambiguous about our situation with freedom and liberty and the mission of the church and the gospel. So let's begin by going way back way back before any of us came to earth. And I don't know how far back in earth time that was, but there was a great council and a war in heaven. And in that, uh, during that war, there was counsel given, there were proposals made, as I assume you know. We go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against them. Uh, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, <clears throat> which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's Revelation 12, verses 7 through 9. Now we're going to go to the eternal great price, the book of Moses, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. And I, the Lord, spake unto Moses, saying, That Satan, whom thou hast commanded in the name of mine only begotten, is the same which was from the beginning. And he came before me, saying, Behold, here am I, send me. I will be thy son, and I will redeem all mankind, that, that one soul shall not be lost. And surely I will do it. Therefore give me thine honor. Second verse. Behold, my beloved son, which was my beloved and chosen from the beginning, said unto me, Father, thy will be done, and the glory be thine forever. Wherefore, because that Satan rebelled against me, and sought to destroy the agency of man which I, the Lord, had given unto him, and also that I should give unto him mine own power. By the power of mine only begotten, I caused that he should be cast down. That's the quote from President Benson uh, at the Assembly Hall in 1966. And I quote, 
Every person on the earth chose the right side during the war in heaven. Be on the right side now. President David O. McKay at BYU, May 18, 1960. There are two contending forces. These forces are known and have been designated by different terms throughout the ages. In the beginning, they were known as Satan on the one hand and Christ on the other. In these days, they are called domination by the state on one hand, personal liberty on the other. By the way, let me give credit. This presentation was put together by a wonderful patriot and freedom fighter, Brian Turner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's his. I'm using his. It saved me the time to put something <laughs> together myself. Next quote is President John Taylor. In general, and by the way, notice these are general conference talks. These are, these are in conference from the pulpit. General Conference, April 1882, John Taylor. Besides the God preaching the gospel, we have another mission. The perpetuation of the free agency of man and the maintenance of liberty, freedom, and the rights of man. The Ensign, February 2006. The title of the article is, I, the Lord, Make You Free. And this is, uh, well, it's kind of small, Elder Shirley Christensen. Our responsibility to preserve freedoms. Are we doing all that we should, should to preserve freedom wherever we live? The Lord has placed upon his children the responsibility of preserving their precious freedoms. President Ezra Taft Benson. In a little book he wrote called The Proper Role of Government. There were only two possible sources. Rights are either God-given as part of the divine plan or they are granted by government as part of the political plan. If we accept the premise that human rights are granted by government, then we must be willing to accept the corollary that they can be, be, be denied by government. I, for one, shall never accept that premise. Doctrine and Covenants, section 134, verses 1 and 2. We believe that governments are instituted of God for the benefit of man and that he holds men accountable for their actions in relation to them, both in making laws and in administering them for the good and safety of society. We believe that no government can exist in peace except such laws are framed and held inviolate as will secure each individual the free exercise of conscience, the right and control of property, and the protection of life. DNC 101, verses 77 and 78. According to the laws and constitution of the people which I have suffered to be established and should be maintained for the rights and protection of all flesh according to just and holy principles that every man may act in doctrine and principle pertaining to futurity according to the moral agency which I have given unto him that every man may be accountable for his sins for his own sins in the day of judgment. I'm going to editorialize here. The way, we, the way we work to maintain our rights has to do with not only our freedoms in government from, uh, and, and liberties, but our salvation. DNC 98, verses 6 and 7. Therefore I, the Lord, justify you and your brethren of my church in befriending that law which is the constitutional law of the land. The adjective in there. Constitutional law. He didn't say the law of the land. Yeah. And as pertaining to the law of man, whatsoever is more or less than this, than this cometh from evil. If it's not constitutional law, if it's more or less, it's evil. Freedom is so important that God sent Moroni to ensure victory. This is something that a good number of the saints that I, that I speak with had not heard before. Elder Orson Hyde, in the Journal of Discourses, Volume 6, page 368. That same angel that appeared to Joseph Smith was in the camp of Washington by an invisible hand led on our fathers to conquest and victory. That's how important it was. Every one of those, uh, Wilford Woodruff, General Conference, April 1898. Every one of those men that signed the Declaration of Independence called upon me as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Would those spirits have called upon me as an elder in Israel to perform that work if they had not been noble spirits before God? They would not. Joseph F. Smith, General Conference, April 1946. <clears throat> there has been a tendency among some Latter-day Saints, even when the Constitution is mentioned, to say, there he goes talking politics. I am not talking politics. I am quoting the words of the Lord. 